Hello, I'm Sensei Michael with Lotus Self Defense Studios, and this is part two of a video series. Uh, you can find it on YouTube, Lotus Kempo Karate. Uh, this will be yellow belt techniques. So at this point, you are a yellow belt and you're working on your material to earn your orange belt. So let's begin. We'll start with a good horse stance, which again, doesn't have to be too wide. You only want it about shoulder width apart, not too deep, but definitely it should be comfortable. You want to sit into it. Hands again, back into your fist positions, back on your ribs. And we're going to start with the eight point blocking system, but a little bit more into the manner of striking from it. So this is the eight point blocking system with strikes. The number one block is going to stop the right hand. You're going to drop it down, circle all the way around, and then front punch. Number two block is going to be the opposite hand. Drop it down as it circles around, you'll front punch. The number three block, hand comes up to the ear, go across the body, back punch. The number four block, hand comes across to the ear, across your body, back punch. The number five block, forearm comes down across the hip, walk all the way up to your head, hammer strike to his rib. The number six block, walk all the way up over your head, hammer strike to the rib. Seven, hand comes across the body, walks all the way down just about past the knee, chicken wrist strike under the chin, and then the number eight block, hand comes across the body, walks down past the knee or hip, chicken wrist to the chin. One more time, eight point blocking system with strikes. So we have number one, block, front punch, two, block, front punch, three, block, back punch, four, block, back punch, five, block, hammer strike, six, block, hammer strike, seven, block down, chicken wrist, and then eight, block down, and chicken wrist. And again, you wanna practice this stationary, you wanna practice this with motion and movement, so you can practice your half moon steps a variety of different ways. And again, if you have any complications, never hesitate to bring it up in class, or just pull me aside, and we will work it. The other combination, so as a white belt, you learn six and seven, which we already covered. The combination that you learn as a yellow belt is combination number three. I'm gonna do it from a couple different angles, and then later on in this series, I will have some ukis or attackers, so you can get that perspective of where your body should be uh, when a person attacks you. Combination number three, and again, a lot of the Kempo combinations are not versed off of just a straight right punch or a straight left punch. A lot of them could be holds, pushes, or grabs. So this works for a multitude of different uh, type of attack scenarios. In combination with three, the person would be coming towards me. Let's say it's a right punch or a right push or a lapel grab. I'm gonna parry with my left hand, the outside of the hand. So as soon as he comes towards me, my hand is gonna mean it to deflect. Parry means soft block. So I'm gonna soft block and then slide up his arm just a little bit to his elbow as I front punch the groin. Now, if he's wearing something of good material, you can grab that and pull the person down just a little bit so you can back punch to the chin. If he's not, you can still just grab the elbow. You're gonna knife him to the back of the person's neck and you're gonna grab his left shoulder, trying to dig your fingers into the shoulder neck area. As you give it a pull with the right hand, you'll push the person with your left hand. So we have two-way action, push and pull, turn, as we drop them, we're gonna knife hand to the heart, and then we're gonna pivot, thrust, punch, strike to the groin. Notice a little bridge for extra power and protection. Cross and cover to get away. One more time, combination number three. So the person attacks, I'm gonna to step to the outside and block, front punch to the groin, back punch to the temple, knife hand to his neck, grab, pull, turn your opponent, knife hand to the heart, thrust, punch, strike to his groin, and then cover. From a different perspective of you, if you can picture your opponent or the opponent being here in front of me as he attacks, I'm gonna do the same thing. Try to remember that your hands should always lead the body. So I don't wanna start with my hands down, then go into the technique and raise the hands. You're gonna walk into the punch. That's not so good. So you keep your hands up right from the get-go. As the attack comes in, I've already faded or parried the punch, front punch to his groin, I'm sorry, front punch to the groin, Back punch to the temple, knife hand to the neck, grab pull turn, knife hand to the hat, thrust punch him in the groin, and then cover. And then just one more time from this angle, 
Combination of three. Fancy. The other material that we work on is going to be your first half of the second form, known as two pinion. The concept of two pinion is what if the person throws multiple strikes at me? In one pinion, we covered it could be a, a front punch going at you, it could be a kick. We had a simple block and a simple step through scenario with a front punch. In two pinion, or pinon, it's going to be two strikes coming at you, which will be evident through the block that goes low and high. You will see. It follows the same eye pattern. So the first thing that we're going to do is in all forms, show respect, bow to our opponent, take a small step out left, big circle with the right, draw the fist back. Fist come up to the rib, gonna roll down just towards the floor. So my first opponent being on my left side, crossing my arms, I'm gonna turn and block down. Whether he throws a punch or a kick, it doesn't matter. But then as he throws his second strike, I'm gonna come across with that hand and meet it with a knife hand block to the wrist. We're stepping a little bit lower, thrust punch him in the groin, cross your arms and turn so you get a bearing on where the second person is. Then you can rotate towards him, block down, add that knife hand, step in, thrust punch strike to his groin. Now coming up the middle, we're gonna block down with the left, and again, throw a second block, which will be the knife hand. As we proceed forward, we're gonna thrust punch to the face, and as we finish the land, we'll try to reverse hand with the groin. I say try because there's a lot more defense going on in the form than we actually realize. He's gonna block this. He's gonna recounter me, so I re-block. Then I'm gonna step up with the left thrust punch to the face, reverse hammer strike to the groin. He'll throw another strike, which I block, and we'll end it with the thrust punch to the face, reverse hammer to the groin. When you first learn it, it looks like there's a pause in the middle of that. So in other words, it may look as though you're going one stop, two in. You never wanna break continuity of flow within a form, all forms, whether it's the, the hard and the linear pinion or the flowing and the circular kata, should have constant motion and movement. Kepo is very much a moving system. It's not a stationary, a stagnant system. So when you're practicing it a little bit quicker, make sure you put the con uh, continuity within the steps of the foot pattern. So when you're coming up the middle, it would be block, hit, hit, switch, hit, hit, switch, hit, hit. And that's all I want you to practice right now as a yellow belt. Just perfect that motion of uh, the first part of one pinion. And then as we progress, we can go on to the second half with more material. I hope this was helpful. Again, if anyone needs any extra assistance, never hesitate to ask. Uh, that's why I'm here. Um, message for the day. Sometimes in life, when you're doing a karate technique, you get lost. Uh, I've been lost so many times it's not even funny. Um, the important thing is realizing when you get lost. And sometimes you need a little help getting home. So never be afraid to reach out to someone. You've got family members, friends, so many people that care and love you. The higher power, I can't say enough. Uh, there's always a way home and you'll get there. Thank you.